What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hardley and in this video we are going to interview the CEO of a very exciting technology company. Here is everything you need to know. Let's go. Okay, so the company we are talking about today is called Trace Safe and they trade on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the ticker symbol TSF. They also trade in the US under the ticker symbol UTOLF and the company is headquartered in Vancouver. The price as I filmed this video is 53 cents, giving them a market cap of roughly $24 million. This is what the logo looks like underneath and their website is tracesafe.io. Now the gentleman that we are going to be speaking with today, his name is Wayne Lloyd and he is the current CEO at Tracesafe. He was also a founder at Consensus Core. He is on the board of directors at Airbnb Wireless and he is also a chartered financial analyst. So this is a very smart gentleman and the topics that we are going to talk about today include the business model and company operations at TraceSafe, what does their product look like and who are their customers, then we're going to dive into the balance sheet and the revenue and we're going to finish it off with the recent news. So if you get any value out of this interview, remember to click that like and subscribe button and let's jump right in. All right, Wayne, thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. I sincerely appreciate it. How are you doing today? Doing great, Zach. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. So to kick us off here, can you just give us a brief description of your business model at TraceSafe and how you guys make money? Sure. So TraceSafe is an enterprise wearables company, an enterprise IoT company. Uh, we design products specifically for enterprise use uh, that uh, solve you know, very specific business applications uh, that are needed uh, in those large scale enterprises. So that could be cruise ship industry, could be uh, manufacturing industry, oil and gas, and so on. So there's lots of, lots of places where our products live. Wonderful. And how big is the team and how big is the operations? Where do you guys operate as of right now? So the team is set, centered sort of around the world. We have uh, our product team here in Vancouver, Canada. Um, we have a lot of our design uh, and deployment group in the United States. Uh, primarily in uh, Nevada and California. And uh, we have a sales uh, division in Singapore, as well as a product uh, uh, and engineering division in India. So we're actually, you know, all over the place. Um, it's really a global organization. Our customers are all around the world. So uh, we have team all around the world. But in total, you know, there's over 100 people uh, in the group now. Wow. So it sounds like you're, you're really starting to manage something big here. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in this and what does your background look like? Sure. Yeah, I think, I mean, for, for me, I've always been in the you know, financial sector um, and, you know, sort of the intersection between, you know, uh, finance and technology. So working on high tech companies and uh, joined the team uh, with Dennis and Suresh. Um, so Dennis is really our hardware product guy and, and Suresh is uh, technical um, as well as, you know, our sales team, Gord Zielstra uh, leading our sales division. The, you know, the company is sort of set up in the sense that we are in the business of measuring new things um, and helping you guys uh, and helping our customers get information to their fingertips uh, in new and interesting ways. And so, you know, in the measuring new things category, I think one of the biggest uh, problems the world was facing was around uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, over the last couple of years. So um, measuring that and helping, you know, uh, countries, companies, and, and other people sort of get their arms around that and quantifying it and helping reduce risk was a big focus for us. But really that theme of, you know, um, our devices help companies measure new pieces of new data points is really the theme um, that we want to uh, drive home and, you know, delivering data to their business in ways that matter to them, you know, delivering the data in just in time way in a, in a way that that helps them pinpoint problems in their business are sort of the two key points. And those, this is the world we're living in where the world keeps serving up, you know, innovation, uh, world keeps serving up problems. It, it keeps serving up new data to be measured. And that's why we play such an important role for companies. So can you tell us a little bit about how you measure that data? What does the hardware look like? What does the software look like? For somebody that hasn't seen it before or that is just learning about your company for the first time, what, what does the package actually look like? And then what does the revenue generation side of that look like as well? 
Sure. So it's effectively a gateway. You know, the gateway is the communication module and, uh, and then a, a wearable or an endpoint device. Uh, so that might be, you know, a number of different form factors. One of the ones we're most famous for is just wearable wristbands, um, wearable lanyard, uh, where, you know, there's, there's, there's many different ways, just a small device that can, that can be close to, you know, either a person or a thing, um, that will measure a certain thing, you know, whether that's temperature, um, in kind of a refrigeration unit, whether that's, you know, the distance that someone's walked or, you know, for a security guard where he's checked in, um, to do his security rounds. Um, so you have that endpoint, and then the gateway is the thing that basically pulls, the information out of that device and reports it back to the cloud. So there's really two two parts of the hardware solution, which is the gateway and the uh, and the wearable. And then on the software side, we have a very robust platform that kind of lives, and that's the the brains of of the unit, and that's how the data that the people log into the the admin dashboard. Uh, they can see and sort and sort of manipulate the data um, in ways that uh, that are important to them. And with regards to these people that are logging in, are there any specific industries that you see the most traction with or the most success with? And where do you see that evolving over the next kind of 12 to 24 months as well? So I think the industries that um, have gotten the most traction, I think construction it has been a big one for us um, with our site safety product. So basically being able to help them return to work uh, deliver new insights about safety and, and uh, site awareness, um, particularly around heavy machinery, different sensors, things like that. That's been a really important one. Uh, oil and gas, uh, our work with oil search um, has been has been pretty pretty great. And cruise ships um, has been massive. Obviously, trying to get those guys you know back back uh, back working, but not only the acute nature of you know getting people back on the ships. Um, through the COVID-19 pandemic, but working with them really closely to develop uh, exciting, innovative products that are going to make the guest experience a lot better. So that means, you know, being integrated into the uh, access control systems for the doors, payments and other things. So just really delivering products that are going to elevate the, the user experience. And that goes through, you know, across hospitality. So for sure. I saw the uh, bracelets that you guys made with, I think it was Royal Caribbean and all the different colors. I'll throw up a couple of photos of those right now, but they look, they looked awesome. And, and it sounds like you can just continue to add functionality into those too, which is, which is fantastic. Now, one of the, uh, one of the areas that I was super interested in when I found your company is that you guys are pretty involved with the IIHF World Junior Championships. And it sounds like they've used you guys almost multiple times now. Can you tell us about how that relationship is, why do they keep going back to you guys and how did things go this year? Cause I know that there were a couple of changes that happened. Yeah. So we've worked with them. Um, they're an incredibly good partner. I think they had a, um, you know, particularly challenging task ahead of them, which was to, to bring an international sporting event. You know, you, you have these different leagues, you know, the NHL, um, NFL, NBA, they have a kind of particular set of problems. Um, you know, getting things back, back, which is, you know, testing. And, but when you have a, a tournament where you have people coming in from, you know, a dozen or more countries, every one of those countries has a different protocol, like all the players, there's different expectations. There's all this kind of, there's just a lot more variables. So they brought us in to help um, just sort of manage that and use our devices um, to sort of bridge a few of those gaps. Um, it's been very successful every year. Uh, the product has worked incredibly well, helped them facilitate. Um, I think, you know, there's just the, I think this year, the nature of the Omicron and the virus just kind of was, you know, a, a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but I think overall, you know, those guys handled um, the situation uh, as best they could. And, and like I said, they've been incredible partners. Their focus has always been on, you know, the health and safety of the athletes and, uh, and putting on an incredible event under, you know, really, uh, stressful situations. For sure. And, and I think you nailed it at the end there. There couldn't be like, that couldn't be a more stressful job than trying to event plan for, uh, for an international tournament like that at this time. So, um, hats off to you guys for the successful job that you did now switching gears just a little bit. I want to dive into the finances, um, right now, because you guys just 
put out an announcement where you raised $3.2 million. Can you tell us a little bit about the plans for that money and what the rest of the balance sheet looks like? Yeah, I think, you know, we we're looking to expand the growth of the company. Um, and I think there's a, there's a multi-prong plan here, which is, you know, we need growth capital and we, we need to accelerate kind of the valuation of the, of the business to kind of keep that, keep that momentum going. Um, we've talked a lot about, you know, potentially moving the venue for where we're listed and, um, you know, trying to go after, uh, bigger markets, uh, from a liquidity standpoint. So whether that, whether that's a, a move to the U S, um, it'd be, we've been working with, uh, different financial partners to, to sort of understand, uh, what's involved with that and, and kind of move in that direction. So, um, yeah, I think this was our first step in really going down that path. It's a single source institutional bridge round, um, which is definitely designed to put us on a new trajectory in a different market and, uh, and uh, um, position us uh, potentially for, you know, bigger capital bandwidth to, to, to execute on the mission. Um, that's, that's basically what this round was all about. And any other insights into the rest of the balance sheet? What does the liability side of things look like? Yeah, I think we, we really only had, um, you know, there's no debt on the books um, outside of these converts. Um, uh, you know, really, it's, uh, it's a pretty clean balance sheet. Uh, the only the facility that we retired, um, I think it's important to note, we were using a receivables facility that was really high, you know, really costly. And so this this uh, this new financing has helped us eliminate that and kind of uh, streamline the cap structure so that uh, we don't have those kind of high cost uh, facilities. So I think overall, incredibly uh, positive development gives us a bit of growth capital, helps us eliminate some of that other higher cost of capital and uh, put us on an incredibly positive footing. For sure. And it looks like the revenue has kind of taken off in line with those uh, with those new changes. Um, I did the quick math on it and the revenue was up about 500% year over year, which in my mind kind of really surprised me. It was quite amazing to see. Now, my question is, can you maintain that moving forward? Do you have any expectations for the next kind of three to six months? How do you feel about the future and uh, and the revenue numbers moving forward? I think the you know, we had an incredible year. And uh, we looked at wanting to build off that momentum. Absolutely. So I think um, our ability to execute has really helped kind of uh, attract talent um, and uh, gain a lot of credibility with our clients to sort of go further with them on their, on their um, opportunities. So I think, yeah, I, I, you know, you, I can't say exactly what the future holds, but I can tell you that we have a team that's really able to execute and you know, under you know really challenging circumstances, was able to grow revenue ex, you know really explosively. And I think we have that core team and those core players that that uh, that were able to deliver that result. And I think are are keen to kind of keep that momentum going. And I think that's uh, that's exactly the direction we're headed. For sure. Now I know your company also just announced a new patent. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it aligns with the vision for your company? Yeah. So I think we have a. Uh, you know, we really have a sustainability goal um, and, you know, have sustainability um, top of mind when we develop these products and, you know, also usability. The, the patent is about um, making it so that you can get the same or predictable precision with the devices while using far less energy. And so that manifests itself, obviously, in the most obvious uh sense is just it uses less power. You have to plug the devices in, you know, less often. But I think less obviously, it means that you can have a smaller battery that gives you the same performance. It's lighter, it's easier to use. Um, people just want, you know, to use something that is going to be less intrusive um, uh, in their day to day. It's less noticeable. Um, so that's, a, and, and uh, in the form factors where we can have a large battery, it means that, you know, you may not have to charge the device for months and months, if not years. Uh, so, you know, the patent was really important for us to, um, you know, push the envelope as far as device performance and device efficiency. 
And so uh, it's been incredibly successful in that regard. Very exciting. And it sounds like you guys are continuing to push the boundaries. I know you just received your ISO certificate and your GDPR compliance. Can you tell us a little bit about how those work and what it allows you to do as a business? Yeah, I think the ISO certification is is really the important one. Um, it, it really speaks to the the the, the level of um, kind of data, yeah, the way we handle all the data internally, uh, the way we gather, store, transfer the data um, that that complies with you know the highest standards. And so that's that's a really important one. It allows us to go after those. Um, those uh, higher end corporate and enterprise clients that require these these sorts of certifications to to get in the door, and so yeah, the team worked really hard to get these uh, certifications, and uh, we passed with flying colors. So really excited about that. Beautiful. So last couple of questions for you here is: as a retail investor, somebody that's just seeing your company for the first few times here, what do you think we should be focused on? What should we be looking at? And what should we maybe be avoiding or not looking at because it's a distraction? Well, I think, you know, the the thing that I would focus on, I think in a lot of these venture style investments, uh, the core thing is execution. How, can the team execute and actually deliver a product and, and, and bring it to market? Um, and can they do that, you know, consistently, um, meeting their customers' needs. And, and, and um, that's something that we've been able to do very, very well. Um, it's been a challenging environment. There's been a lot of um, you know, new opportunities that we've been able to go after and, uh, and um, execute on product very well. Uh, so you know, high degree of uh, delivery and uh, you know, fast turnaround. That's the kind of agility and execution that I think is important for long-term uh, sustainability of a business. Uh, because the one thing that's always happening is that everything's changing. So if you're not able to, to change and move and uh, execute at a consistently high quality, um, you know, it's gonna be very challenging in the long-term. Um, you know, anybody can come up with a, a product, um, but obviously your ability to, to move with the market is, is, is the most important thing. I mean, I think the, um, you know, we, we, the, the thing that I would tend to ignore is, is, you know, we tend to have these sort of explosive quarters of growth. Um, and so I think people get very focused on the quarter over quarter. And I think people should probably look at the, the year over year. So I'm really thankful that you were looking at the year over year numbers, because that's really where, um, where the, the, the measure comes in. So our annual growth is what we're focused on. We're focused on building products that are going to be sustainable for, for longer periods of time. And those quarter over quarter numbers, you know, can, can sometimes be uh, a little lumpy. So the, that's where we're focused. No, that makes sense to me, especially if you're dealing with big contracts, which is exactly what we would like to see as an investor. So I think that makes total sense. Last quest, last couple of questions for you. What do you see as the largest challenge for your company over the next 12 months? Like most people, we are probably struggling to find um, incredible staff um, that want to work on the team. And, and I think there's been a there's been a labor shortage in um, in a lot of the in a lot of the the key areas that we key roles that we need to fill sort of in that in those middle layers. I think from a leadership position, we're rock solid. Um, from an engineering perspective, we're rock solid. I think in those those middle positions, product manager, those are tough to fill. And so, um, you know, we have a focus on recruiting and uh, retention. And uh, I would say that's the that's the most difficult thing is finding incredible people that want to join the mission and and be a part of it long term. I think that makes sense. I'm hearing that answer from a couple of different people, so uh, I think it's definitely a trend that we're seeing in the markets right now. Now, is there anything else that you would like to share with us and where can people do more research and due diligence on you guys? Yeah, I think if you head over to traysafe.io, um, you know, there's a lot of information on the website. Uh, we've done, our YouTube channel has a lot of, uh, you know, other content and information, other interviews that we've done. Um, and just, you know, keep, uh, keep looking out for us on those channels uh, is the biggest thing, but uh, I think you covered everything really well. Appreciate it. Awesome. Wayne, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming on the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. And we'll chat with you soon. Thanks, Zach.